Right now, I am touching part of the oldest parish in Dublin. More than a thousand years ago, parishioners started praying here. They've been through the ups and the downs of the history of the church, but never before have they experienced what they are today. This register dates from 1795. If there's one parish in Ireland that's not only witnessed, but written history, it's the back alley community of St. Mickens. And there are conditions. It must be in a back street. It must not be ornate and it must be um, not offend the ascendancy. Patty Pender, the parish secretary and part-time historian that's written two books on her beloved parish's past, thumbs through decaying pages first inked centuries ago, detailing packed pews, hundreds of baptisms, and thousands of school children raised in the Catholic faith. Father Brian Shortow, the pastor, says most of these writings illustrate the heyday of a Catholic Ireland, when nearly 100% of the Catholic population went to Sunday Mass. The special position of the Catholic Church was recognized in the Constitution, and divorce, artificial contraception, and abortion were all outlawed. We reckon there were 11,500 different surnames. Historians believe the Catholic community of St. Mickens started some 1,000 years ago, while some of the Emerald Isle was still pagan. Back then, believers would just pin prayers to a tree, the very markings of the first parish in Dublin. What they would mostly pray for, we understand, is a good result when they went to the city. So they could have been called up on a legal case, they could owe taxes. But St. Mickens also witnessed the worst of times too, practicing underground during periods of anti-Catholicism, starving through famine, standing at the brink of a civil war. I was there when Pope John Paul came. And persevering through a crippling sex scandal. Still, Patty worries right now is the worst time in the church's history. We are underground again in the church in Ireland. Patty says very few people would even mention they are excited for the Pope to be here. It's almost in a whisper that, oh yeah, I do have a ticket to go to the Pope's Mass. Statistically, the outlook for a Catholic Ireland of the past is dim. LGBT rights are regarded among the most liberal in the world. An abortion referendum was passed and the most optimistic projection of weekly mass attendance is at 20% in Dublin. Well, I know friends when I was growing up and they were, they were perfectly, uh, because it was normal, they were perfectly um, able to admit, I don't go to mass on Sunday anymore, or my family don't go to mass on Sunday anymore, and that was 30 years ago. But spiritually, those who still believe have hope. Ireland has a cycle of going down to its nothingness. That maybe Pope Francis will usher in a new Catholic Ireland. Um, smaller but beautiful um, and we will those of us you know who are going to hang in there and, and many will 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 link arms and will move forward in dublin michelle powers currents news